So we're wrapping up first quarter, last video of the quarter. We're gonna look back on what's been a crazy six months and the dangers of averages and assumptions within this context to hopefully help you get ready for what we feel might be ahead. So I had two working titles for this commentary. They just turned into the two twin pillars that I'm gonna talk about. I'm gonna to try to keep this brief, but let me start with how we're gonna finish, which is, you can't use what has been to extrapolate to where things are headed. Your feelings matter on a personal level. They don't matter when it comes to what the market's gonna do next. And relying on averages or educated assumptions to help make your market moves is going to lead to a dangerous place as well. So how do we unpack all that? So to the first possible title, now pillar of this thing, it was the worst of times, it was the best of times playing on Dickens really all around the point of how quickly markets shift. We're finishing up Q1. Q4 of last year was one of the worst quarters on record. It was quite literally the worst quarter period since 2011, the worst fourth quarter, usually a strong period in the market since 2008, and it was the worst December, again, a very strong uh, time seasonally in the markets historically, since 1931. This wasn't lost on pundits. They tried to tell you it was 2008. It was going to be the Great Depression to scare you, to grab clicks, to grab headlines, to grab views. What actually it turned out was to come uh, after Christmas, <laughs> Christmas Eve literally being the low, was one of the best first quarters on record. It was literally the best quarter period in 10 years. It was the best first quarter, not usually as strong a period, in 20 years. Um, and if you bought into the negative hyperbole in December, you missed out on what was a tremendous first quarter in the markets. Point number two, title number two, the dangers of averages and assumptions. So this is a great time, I think, to remind you, again, that averages don't hold all the time, they hold over time. The historic average of the S&P 500 is right around eight to 10%. The amount of calendar years in which you've seen that in the last now 91 years, is only 10 times, less than 10% of the time, are you gonna, or you know, roughly 10% of the time, are you going to see that? Just like those feelings that felt so bad in December and quickly turned into euphoria in, in January, so too, if you're relying on historic averages to judge your plan or your feelings, they're going to be misleading a lot of the time. How about those assumptions? I think the assumption, Again, outside of a recency bias that what was going on in Q4 was gonna continue indefinitely, that averages hold with greater regularity than they do, again, over abbreviated periods of time, comes the idea that we can know what's next. Uh, nobody claims to try to time the market exactly, and yet, indirectly, they talk about things that suggest they do all the time. In December, it was that the Fed was gonna crater the market. Little did we know that in January, they were gonna alleviate the Fed rate hikes, and then in March, tell us that they were done for the indefinite future. Market started rallying before that, uh, but continued to rally on that news, uh, and diff difficult to impossible to predict. And again, by the time the, t uh, the Fed made that announcement in January, we had already snapped back a lot of those gains. The second point, and the point today that I wanna leave you with as we head in uh, to the rest of this year now is around the yield curve. This is dominating the news, it's dominating the headlines. Um, it should strike you as a bit curious that it's not actually dominating the markets. What you're hearing is every time the yield curve inverts, there's a recession, every time there's a recession, there's a bear market. It's just simply not the case. What's also true, and Brian Westbury noted this, is that since 1960, uh, the only time you've had a recession is when the Fed funds rate uh, becomes 50 basis points higher than the 10-year note. Currently, they're both trading right around 2.5%. Which one's gonna play out? Is it going to be that the market is gonna readjust itself and continue higher, um, as maybe that second factoid would suggest, or that a recession is imminent or around the corner? Point being, we don't know. So. Don't spend a lot of time, uh, certainly call with us questions, whether it's about your feelings, your questions, we get those all the time. I had a client in December call and say, you know, I don't feel differently anytime the markets sell off. That's natural, that's how we're wired, right? It's natural to be curious about these headline news. That is absolutely what we're here for. It, they just can't be the things that govern 
one's process and their plan is I like to remind that client, hey look, the difference between you now and the you told me about 20 years ago is you would have run all into cash where now you're calling, you're engaging in a more healthy process and that is something again that we can control. So that's our wish for you. We don't know where the Fed's headed, uh, whether rates will resume or get cut, whether this yield uh, curve inversion is Fed induced, central bank induced or indicative of an imminent recession, but the good news is it doesn't have to control your financial lives. It doesn't have to control the success of your financial goals if you can look past it and again, focus on you and what you can control. So with that, we're gonna leave it there. Thank you so much. We look forward to seeing you again soon.